Hey techies, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to build a better good looking GUI application using Tikinta. Better than you would expect actually. So if you have not subscribed, make sure you do that now because you don't, you don't want to miss other videos on this series. And let's get straight into the video. Alright guys, so I've created a file here already. You can go ahead and do the same thing. So we're going to do what we do normally. We're going to set up Tikinta. So I'm just going to skip, skip this whole simple, easy process. Alright, so let's run it and see what we have. So I'm gonna open this in terminal. If you don't have this option here, make sure you watch my video on how to install the terminal in, in Sublime Text. I'm going to put in the description below as well. So yeah, um, let's make sure I'm using the right version. I want to make sure I'm not using version two points. Okay, alright. So now we're gonna run Python si car fleet.py. And yeah, we have this. All right. So now you must have seen the thumbnail and see that the picture on there doesn't look like a regular Tinkit app. In fact, it is. So what we will just do is we're going to install a library which is built on top of Tinkit that enables us to build that way. So just type pip install and then type custom Tinkit. I have it installed already, so it's not going to install it again. But if you run this and this doesn't work, then you should try pip three if that doesn't work um try python m pip install then custom take enter you can also try pip three over here okay and if that doesn't work you can try python three all right so if you see experience any errors installing it tell me what your error is in the comment section below and i'm going to find a solution but we're going to find a solution so let's get straight into it now we have custom thinking that installed i'm going to come here and then we're going to import it so we're going to say import custom tkinta okay so now if i change this to custom tkinta save and then i'm going to run this oh no that's not what i'm going to run i'm going to run python si yeah that so i just use arrow up to move between Command previous commands arrow up and arrow down to move in between previous commands. Okay, so this is meant to be CTKS. Yes. I'm gonna run that, and as you can see, it is black, and that's because my this team of my PC is black. It's on black. It's on black. Yeah, that's why this is black. So whatever your piece, that is the default actually. It chooses whatever the piece, the team of your PC is. We can change that by doing custom think that dot set appearance mood if i'm not wrong so let's do light i'm going to save that and then i'm going to run this again as you can see it shows light it's just white or uh, whatever color this is yeah so that is for the light mode you can also put dark but by default it's a system which will give me let me save that let me run that which will give me this black yeah okay so we're going to clear that and cancel that now let's go straight into building the application so I'm going to pull up this image here. So just uh, so just so we have a reference, okay? So I'm going to be looking at it once in a while. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a label. This label you can see here. So we're going to come here and then we're going to say um, title, and then you can call it app title whatever you want. So you can also use. So the, the beautiful thing about custom thinking that is you can use TK alongside it and it works fine so i'm gonna come here and then we're gonna say of course one new area from app and then let's say our text equals to calculate interest rate okay so I'm, of course we want to put it on okay yeah and then we're gonna run this so as you can see calculate interest rate that that's good um so we're gonna, let's let me put this down here I want to add the font let's use um but you might not have this on your system so you can use Arial, but then you maybe install the font of your system if you want to use that so i'm going to do a vertical and then give it a size of 20 and let's save that let's control c to close that and then run it again so as you can see it's big and that's nice okay 
So I want to add some padding there. We're going to add padding here, pad X, pad Y. So to the top and bottom, five will be okay. And now let's create the this other this input element here. Okay. So I'm going to call that. Uh, okay. We could call that payment info frame because it's going to be a frame. But um, I think let's let's call that that okay we're gonna do custom thing with that dot okay. of course ctk frame as well that's how i create the frame also and then we're gonna come and do payment for frame dot pack also want to add filing up and for the top and bottom yes yeah, so we have this space here and this space here okay so you guys know what padding is so i'm not going to be talking about things like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and create this input element. So I'm, I'm just gonna skip skip the process. So it's going to be like in fast motion. All right, I'm gonna stop here for now. Let me expand this. Okay, let me move this down a bit so you guys can see it's very well. Um, okay. So here we are using the entry, but in this case, since we're using custom thinking that we are gonna use CTK. Okay, this is meant to be CTK entry. Now you inherit. Now this piece of that text is a feature with custom thinking that where it shows you what you're meant to type so enter the principal but it's not an actual text so if you do html you should know what the place of that means so we're going to see what it means now let me save that then we're going to control c and then run the app again ah uh, okay so this principal is not defined ah there's a typo here i'm going to run that Okay, so as you can see, this is what this is what it looks like. We have the principal and then this. Uh, it looks similar. We're, go we're going to get here. We're going to get here. All right. So let's go ahead and add the other one. So it's just basically going to be the same thing. So I'm going to skip the process and then you can try as well to write it on your own. Actually, I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to change this to interest rates and then this i'm going to change to interest rate input so yeah i'm going to say annual um so this will be on the second row it will both be on the second row okay okay i think that should do let's run and see what we've got all right nice so we still need to add some like a space in between this um, to do that it's easy we can either put it up like add pad x up here and down here so i'm just going to put a pad padding pad y at 10 okay 10 let's try 10 okay so yeah this looks better yeah this looks okay all right so I'm going to copy and paste this as well. So it's going to be at two and two as well. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to run this again. Control C, run. Yeah, this looks good. This looks good. Right. So now let's create these buttons. Okay. I want. I think I should create a frame for that. So we're going to do action or Call to action. Okay, let me just see action button frame. Across TK the frame. So I'm gonna use a TK frame here to show you that we can actually mix these things together. So let me let me show you an example with this. I think this would be nice if I do it. Okay, this is the yeah TK dot label. Okay, and I save that. Let me run that. And this also shows the difference between both of them. So you see a black a white this background on this as you can see calculate interest rate so i think i might even leave it at this it looks i don't know i love it this way so we're going to even leave it that way so you can see the difference between both frames this comes with background so we're going to set to get a frame you can use any frame you want but to stay consistent i'm going to use c custom thinking that dot c t k frame and now this is inherit from the app as well and also you can give your frames a background which is um okay. let's leave that here 
action body frame door pack so i um, want to add padding to the top and also we want to feel make it feel like on both make it feel the x and y okay so we're gonna add pad x um, i think okay let's let's run this and see what this looks like initially i'm trying to get this okay let's run this uh, of course i beat this so but oh look at this frame it is lag as you can see but when we put our elements in there we should see let me put our elements in there so it should reduce so yeah i'm gonna come here and then let's create the buttons okay so yeah we're gonna use the ctk button as well so of course you guess it right ctk and then button we start easy so so once this so i actually beat some oh i should i should have, i guess i should have i guess i should have showed these guys how something about this app i built but we're gonna sit here so i want when the color to be gray whenever i over on the button and then no when i'm not over on the button the color should be white um i think i'm gonna use green this should be white this one should be white so this should be green and i want a like a, a darker shade so this is going to be um zero one seven zero one f yeah and then let's let's add this to the frame and see what we have first so we're gonna do a pack so once it's a few the continuous so i'm gonna save this let's see what we have in first before that let me comment this let's, let's run this all right so as you can see the button is blue so this is the default it comes with blue but i want it to be green so i'm going to uncomment this and then run this again all right so yeah this is what i'm talking about so when i over it is green or when i'm not overing it's a darker shade which is this color here all right so now let's create the reset button And also one thing i want is since this is right i want to change the color of the text and it's easy see this guys color is equals to you can just put, okay let's put black i think black will be suitable for this oh my goodness i just realized that this hasn't been consistent the use of single and double quotes hasn't been consistent so i'm going to quickly change that right now so it needs to be consistent with what with whatever you are doing in programming okay you see you want to cause some sort of confusion with oh why is he using double quotes single quotes and probably maybe you are getting a bug and you're wondering if it's because i'm using double or single quotes no that's not the reason so we need to be consistent as a programmer that's one thing you should learn for sure okay so let's run this let's close this and run it ah oh, there we go there we go there we go ah oh, that's nice so i don't like the way this is too close so i'm gonna come here i'm gonna do part y i think five do five mm, that looks okay that looks okay so i want a bit of space on the left and the right so in the frame yeah i'm gonna do part x we'll give it 20. okay mm. so apparently it takes it takes the same initially let me run it again initially it takes the same width as this okay like this okay let me give it let me increase the size let me increase this to 25 so i'm gonna run that okay so this is the buttons we have okay same thing with this but I don't want it to be expanding like this, okay? So I'm gonna change this so it doesn't expand. So we're gonna do up the resizable. So for the X axis, when I say X axis, I mean horizontally like this. This is for the first one, X axis, and then for the Y. So this is for the Y, so you can move it up and down like this. Okay, so if I close that, I run it again. 
now you should see that you can't ex wait expanding that shouldn't be um oh I didn't save it ah so that shouldn't expand yeah we can't even see the see the expandable icon anymore so that's good nice so then with the UI now let's build the the um, functionalities the functions that these buttons call to calculate whenever we click on them so of course you know we use the command prime uh, the command um, parameter here to do that but before we do that let's define our functions the first function we want to define is the function to calculate the simple interest so usually if you just need to build apps like this you can go on google and search for the formulas then interpret the formulas or if you can't you can tell chat gpt to interpret the formulas for you and it does that fine so um actually let's do the simple one which is the reset button that wouldn't take time so um let's put functions up here so we're gonna do funk oh goodness so guys the reason i'm writing function here is because i've been writing javascript quite a lot recently so that's why i'm doing that so i'm going to do reset instead and then i want to reset basically we want to get all the inputs and then just delete the values we have in them so for the first one which is principal input this one i want to do principal input so we also want to get interest rate input and then want to get yes input so i'm going to be i'm going to be doing the same thing on all of them so what we'll do here is we just come here command click command click so this you know, we just type at the same time. We're gonna do dot delete. So this delete method I'm called on the entry widget. So we're gonna want to delete from the first item. So when you call this delete, let me run this and show you. So when you type things in here, the first thing here is zero. So that's what we want to. That's where we want to start deleting from. So we're gonna start deleting from the first element, of the first item there, to the last one. And how do we get the last one? Of course, you can just do the length of the principal input dot get. So dot get is the way you get the inputs, whatever you type here. So then we get it, and then we check the length for it. Then we delete from zero up to the length of the input. So I think that should work fine. I'm gonna close this and then run this again. So if I reset, let me see my terminal. Okay. So now let me put type things in here and calculate the amount. No, oh, sorry, reset. Okay, oh, right. Pardon me, sorry about that. So we're gonna come and do command reset button. Let's save that. Let's run this. What is the name of our function again? Reset. As you can see, we so apparently it's only reset deleting this. Ah, my bad. Goodness, that's a dumb mistake to make. But well, anyway, I'm not dumb. Okay, we're gonna type this reset values. Oh, nice. So that does it. Plus, if there is nothing there, we don't get an error as well. So now let's go into calculating the interest amount. So we're gonna define the function just below this. You know, we're gonna define calculate. Do we have something called calculate total already? Where is that look at? Oh, okay. Let's go to calculate. I was thinking we had something named, we have a variable for that already, but let's call this calculate amount. So we're gonna we want to calculate the amount. We need the principal, we need the interest rate. And then the amount of years right so now let's use a try except because occasionally when we are doing some um calculations we might get errors and we don't want the errors to just be showing to just show on the terminal we want it to show to our users as well so we're going to come and then we're going to do try oh okay try except then we're going to see if the first thing i want to do is make sure my principal interest rate and years are not empty um I'm not empty, so I'm gonna do if not principal or not 
interest rate or not yes i'm gonna print um to see what we have i just want to see what we've got there principal to make sure it's doing it right so then we'll raise an error so for this type i will raise a type wait so i would raise a type error because it will be empty string okay if empty, it will be empty strings okay so let's let's undo that here so let's call this except type error do need this here so now what we just need to do is we can just show um, a pop-up box to say this is this and it needs to input some text so that's one way we can do it so we're going to use think that a message box for this so at the time of filming this video ctk doesn't have this message box yet so you see um in works still, it's still being developed so you can contribute to it on github as well okay so we're gonna say give it a title and i'll be called incomplete info so let's see make sure let's tell them what we want them to do make sure you type in values for all fields so this is definitely more than 80 characters already so i'm gonna move it down here okay all right so down here we're gonna say command equals to now we need, because we need to pass some inputs we're going to use a lambda function so we're just going to do lambda and then so we're going to do calculate amounts that's what we call the function okay so i'm going to pass in some inputs here the first one here is going to be the value of the principal so we're going to do principal input or get and also when we get it we want to make sure we for example if someone should just type in spaces like this we want to make sure we remove those spaces I have what is left or if someone types in something like this um let's say space 23 space so we want to make sure we remove those spaces around it okay so we're gonna do the strip here to do that the strip okay um so let me show you how that works if i come and do for those that don't know it but you should know it if you as a python developer well but if you don't know it i'm gonna show you real quick so it equals to 23 so I do a dot strip. So this is a string, so it's going to work for that. So this actually, yeah. So we're gonna put space in there, space in there. So it's going to remove the spaces around this. Okay. So by default, the CTK entry takes in the takes uh, converts the value to a string. Okay. So we're gonna put in spaces here. Oh jeez. okay this looks okay yeah that's that looks good now let's run our app let's close this control d okay all right so if i press calculate the amount says make sure you type values for all your fields so if i type here here and leave this empty oh no yeah yeah and it's empty you see it tells me the same thing so we can see what we have here which was what we printed over here yes principal so we have yes the first mp the second but we don't have anything on the third field okay so if i type this and i press it we get no errors so now we need to deal with we need to make sure we are we are getting integers of float as our value so we're going to do that here so to make sure that we're going to convert this to float all our values to float so i'm going to use a multiple assignments interest rate so we assign them and then i'm going to say float principal so if this is actually a text we're going to get an error from trying to convert the text to a float then we undo the error in here and tell the user that we are imputing the oh sorry for that background noise if you can hear it so we're going to tell the user right here we're going to tell the user that they are imputing the wrong values we expect type of values we expect all right now so this whenever we do this this gives us let me show you let me show you i'm gonna run this all right so if you put in text here and we try to convert those text it gives us a value error okay down here so that we can convert it to a text so that works well that works well for us because we don't want them to enter a text we're going to say accept value error we're also going to show them 
an error she want to show error say invalid input make sure okay let us see make sure you type in numbers only okay i'm gonna come here and bring this down cool let's close that and run it again so here i'm gonna type in 50 type in 20 and then type in a so if i do calculate amount make sure you type in numbers only i'm gonna change that to sorry i'm gonna change that to 30 and then we get no error so now let's do our calculation which is the last part i'm gone guys so here we're gonna say interest is equals to so to calculate the, the formula for this is of course is p principal times rate times time all over 100 okay that's how you calculate for your interest rate um okay um i was going to mention something but let's just go ahead here now so to do that of course we do principal times interest rate times years over 100 okay that's how you calculate your interest then we want to also show our amount the total amount they will pay after like after we calculate the interest okay so your interest is for example this is same calculation so i don't want to bore you with what calculation is actually so we're just going to do this if you don't know about it the aim is to show you how to build this calculator with this and then integrate it to your functionality okay so you don't need to worry so much about this calculation so if you don't know what they are so we're going to do principal plus the interest okay and then when we are done with that we want to show our user what the outputs what the amount and the interest are so we're going to say interest amount let's say, let's say calculated values whatever you want to call it so that will be the title of the frame just like this and then down here so the first one to show we're going to show the interest to pay is okay I, I think we should use um we should okay let's let's use the format function here so that will be um so the first element will be the 2 f well, it's been about since i used it to use this so we're gonna do this so the interest amount to pay is this so this should just convert whatever the calculated value is to two decimal places so if you have something like this five point do, 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 so 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 you can convert it to two decimal places okay all right so the string is not going to end here let's also have the amount the total amount is so so this would be the second second element so um, the two f as well. Then we're going to end our stream as well. Let's do the format. All right. Okay. And then we're going to add the interest and then the amount. So let's save that. Okay. So I'm going to do ten. 20 and 2 1 oh, and then 20 let's put so if i calculate the amount so it says the interest rate is 80 percent the um, total amount is this so why is that okay b okay so i'm going to save that and it again so i'll be 10 so let's give it a principal of 100 let's say the interest rate is 10 percent and then you pay it in the year so as you can see but well, i don't why is it, is it showing me this i need to move that here I want to check something real quick.
Oh yeah, so that works. But the issue I have with that is this is more than 80 um, characters on a line, which is not okay. Which the pep um, standard doesn't agree with. Okay. So if you don't know what pep it is, the standard, so just see it as some guidelines to writing good Python code. Alright, so this works then. So anyway, I'm not going to waste time on this. Let's let's format it well. Actually, I think I will. Ah, that's nice. That's good. That's good. Okay, so we have what we want. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely stay hungry for more. And to do that, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe, so you get more of these videos in this series. I hope you enjoyed this one, and you can also recommend what you would like to see in the comment section below. And peace. See you guys. Don't miss the next one.